Welcome to the Angelscapes podcast, where you're encouraged to uncover and develop a direct connection with your soul's power, wisdom, and spiritual intuition that is ready to blossom. We'll explore new ideas, compelling tips, and real steps to help you learn simple spiritual practices. We're a safe place to learn more about accessing your soul's power with education and spiritual wholeness that could bring more clarity to your life. Now here's your host, a practicing medium, Akashic Records practitioner, spirit artist, coach, and mentor, Dr. Reverend Nancy Smith. Do you know how to reach out to loved ones on the other side? Do you sometimes wish for a connection in spirit in times when you really, really need it? Hello, this is Angelscapes, and I am your host, Nancy Smith. In this episode, um, I'm joined with medium Anthony Miklajewski about simple ways to connect with your loved ones. Session um, Sessions with mediums can be nurturing and validating, but sometimes you need that connection in your own time, and no one's available but you. So just what can you do and just have it's between you and spirit how can you make that connection and then i want you to stay here after uh the podcast presents for we're going to do about 30 minutes of spot readings so um hopefully i'll be watching out on facebook to see who appears um and uh and then i'll i'll um you can ask your questions in the chat great so so anthony's been on the show before anthony mikola and you can find him at um AshevilleMedium.com. He's a psychic medium and he, he re- resides in Asheville, North Carolina area. And he's a proud member of Best American Psychics with me. Um, he has studied with some of the most prominent meetings of mediums in the world. He is certified as a medium through James Bond Prague School of Mystical Arts and has studied exclusively with Mavis Patilla, an amazing medium and teacher in her intermediate and advanced classes. An- Anthony also has traveled to Stansted. England and to Arthur Finley College, which is an amazing place to go, to further his advanced mediumship with Tony Stockwell and Probrick and Simone Key, among many. So thank you for coming on again. Anthony. Yes. Hi, Nancy. Thank you Hi. so much for having me. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so cool. Um, happy Happy Valentine's Day. Happy everyone. Valentine's Day. Happy <laughs> Love Day. Happy. And I think one of the reasons we want to talk about this because partly because it is Valentine's Day and lots of times we uh we miss those people that we love on occasions like Christmas, birthdays, holidays, and when everyone's talking about love, we're going, I miss my loved ones. So yeah. um we can on these on these holidays, we can actually celebrate our loved ones if that are in heaven, if we know how to read the signs and read the read the symbols or so. What are, I thought we would talk about some easy steps to connecting to loved ones on the other side. What would be your first advice to somebody who really wants to talk to somebody and who well, has not no mediumship? Well, you know, uh, I I believe that everybody can make a a um, quick um, mediumship connection. I don't think that everyone is. Um, uh, you know, practice practicing to be a medium professionally, right. but I think everybody has the ability to tap into their loved ones. And um, one thing I would suggest is, you know, sitting in a nice quiet space and maybe going just do some meditation or prayer for um, a good, you know, five or ten minutes, and and ask your specific loved ones to come forward and say, you know, I, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to you know, receive a sign or some signs um, that you're around me. Um, Or maybe I need your assistance. I need your help with some of these decisions that I need to make in my life. I need your help with. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry for a little bit of sound. Um, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it it doesn't happen like right like that. It happens mm -hmm. over a period of time. I call it a practice. Don't. I find that people need, they do it a couple of times, they do it a few times, and then they start yeah. to see something happen. What are right. They? It's not, yeah, it's not going to be like an instant message where you, you know, <laughs> tap it on your phone and, and, you know, mom and dad are going to pop in. It, um, 
Well, for us mediums, I, I think it does happen sort of that way. Um, I mean, yeah. you know, we can actually connect with our, our loved ones pretty regularly. Um, uh, but uh, for the average person out there, I, I do believe they, you know, their world and our world is, is really uh, kind of intermingling. And um, it's just a veil between the two worlds. And they check in with us very regularly um, to see how we're doing. They're watching. So they do hear us. There'll be somebody there hearing you. Yeah. So I have a question <laughs> from Gail. Um, and Gail asks, does it always have to be in through meditation or in meditation that you hear from your loved ones? Um, not for me particularly, no. Sometimes they just pop in um, when I'm I'm busy doing an errand around the house and, and yep. I've got my focus and then all of a sudden I'm in dead stop and, you mm. know, I'm kind of like during the headlights, oh my gosh, my mom's here. Like, you know, yeah. she'll just pop yeah. in or... Um, how, how do you know your mom's there? Um, you know, because I'm not thinking of her and um, she'll just automatically just, you know, pop in. Like I'll see her face. Um or I'll hear her voice. She'll she'll speak to me indirectly. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I feel I feel them. I feel mm -hmm. I I feel like not that. Well, occasionally I'll feel a touch, and it's actually a physical thing. But mostly I just feel them in my heart. I was cooking dinner with with Mike, to, um, and I just felt my aunt Rosemary suddenly. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Aunt Rosemary, and I I was kind of surprised. I said, you know what? I had the best fun with you, Aunt Rosemary, when I was a kid, you know, and I, and I, I was thinking about, geez, we didn't really connect a lot once I, I moved out to New England, but um, there she was, and I felt her, and I felt her gentleness, but it, and sometimes um, I still do this, is this my imagination, but I wasn't thinking about her two seconds ago, and then I was thinking about her, and I said, this has got to be her, so there's a stepping out of faith. There is. And, yes. and you're right. You do feel, you do feel them too. You know, you feel yeah. their presence. Um, and I feel that you, you feel the energy shift uh, in the room. You know, there's just a, um, as mediums, I think we get used to that feeling. Um, and I, and I do believe that the average person does feel the energy shift too, because I've had people tell me that I could feel the energy shift, you know, um, during a reading, they can feel, mm -hmm. The, they can feel it through their heart. They can feel some type of vibration right. or whatever through their body while they're having mm -hmm. a reading, you know? Yeah. Yeah. When you're actually speaking of that, I don't know if I'm kind of going somewhere. When I'm giving readings to other people, I invite them to feel their loved ones at the same time. Do you ever do that? So that I they can get into the habit of feeling them. Do you feel them now? Can you see, did something change for you? That's them. So that they can leave and um, kind of feel and, them on and, their own. Yeah, and have that awareness. They kind of have that awareness, that feeling, and get to know the feeling. Um, right. I agree. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, dreams are huge. Dreams are huge, and um, I like to tell stories. But when my mom passed, mm -hmm. my uh, daughter and her husband and my son and his girlfriend drove all the way up from Mich from New England to Michigan. And um, my daughter came to me the next morning. She's kind of bleary eyed from all the drive and did not much sleep. She said, you know, I dreamed about grandma last night, but she was, I looked out the hotel window and she was standing there, which is my mom was in a wheelchair at the very end, waving at me. I could tell she was fine because she was happy and standing up. And, um, and then I woke, I thought it was real, but then I woke up and I realized I was still in bed and I, I thought, oh my God, that is just the sweetest thing. It and, is. So it, it, yeah, so people it's... people come to us in our dreams. I mean, mm -hmm. um, that's a beautiful thing. I've had uh, many times where um, I've had relatives come to me in my dreams, um, and um, I'm sure you've had clients, uh, Nancy, where they've said to you, "You know, I had this this dream about my father." Oh, you know, yes. and um, and I'll say, you know, don't tell me any more information. Yeah. You know, and. And yeah. so I'll go to spirit and I'll connect with their father and they'll tell me what happened in the dream. Which oh, is, is that so cool? I've never had that is. happen. Oh, that so is like, awesome. Don't tell me, you know, like, yeah. yes, no, right. maybe or I don't know. Don't go into details. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. after when we're all done. So, yeah, right. um, <laughs> uh, you know, I have had clients come to me and say, I can't 
dad died or somebody died and I can't feel them. I have no dreams. There's nothing there. And they're very upset because they want their loved ones to reach out to them, to tell them they're okay, to tell them that they're, they're there. And then mm-hmm. some other relative will have a dream about them. And then they're like upset because they're not dreaming about them. And I, I have my thoughts on why that happens, but what do you think? Why do you think that, have you ever heard of that happening? And what have you said? Yes, I I have. I have had a few um, clients along the way who um, have said to me, you know, I'm disappointed. I haven't felt anything. And that's why I'm here, you know, (laughs) and um, they're just waiting for a sign. They're waiting for a visitation. They're waiting for something. Um, And I said, you know, the spirit world, basically, um, they're in charge, as as you well know, Nancy, of when they're ready to come through. And, um, uh, well, luckily I was able to bring that father or that mother through in the reading, which was really wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they still kept saying, well, I'd love to hear from you. Like, come visit me. And I'm like, well, they hear you now <laughs> they're here. So, um, uh, we'll see what happens, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, that does I'm, happen. I, I had a theory on this that sometimes when we're deep in grief and we really want to reach out but the grief can get in the way um the the Mm -hmm. sadness and um what i tell people too is is be patient and sit um you know take something of theirs and just sit quietly in the morning or in the evening and just do it on a regular basis and then just start paying attention to small things around you it'll happen but it'll happen over time because grief is a funny thing um and you can't time grief sometimes and it's not that they're ignoring you and don't love you and i'm sure when you've brought somebody through um anthony they're telling you that they love you know they tell they, they, oh i'm so glad you, i can talk through you finally i can reach your client and tell them i love them and i miss them and that kind of thing but it's don't take it personal i think it's yeah really cool. yeah don't take it personally it, it i i think it's just um you know, it's like, like Nancy said, you know, the more that you are pushing or reaching out in a desperation, I think they feel that you're still grieving when you're reaching so much, you know, you're yeah. still in that grieving um, uh, part and they don't want you to be sad. They want you to be happy. Right, when right, right, right. They know yeah. your thoughts and they know your feelings. Um, you know, they sense all of that. Um, and, um, I think they know when it's, when it's the time to come, They do. you know, yeah, they have, and they're yeah. working. Usually I have a sneaking suspicion. They're working with your guardian angel. Yes. And, yes. and, and, um, and sometimes they're standing there saying, I'm here. I love you. I'm here. And you can't hear them. And another thought that I've had, um, over the time is that, your expectations of how they're going to talk to you or how they're going to come through is here and their ability to come through is here. So Mm -hmm. your expectations um, on the earth side need to be a little flexible and let them show up. Maybe they're going to show up in nature. Maybe they're going to show up in um, synchronicities with um, radio or a TV show will come on and go, that reminds me. If something is reminding you of your loved one, chances are, they spend a lot of time setting it up to have that thing in front of you so that you would think of them. So that's that very the, true. That's our, very ex, true. Yeah. <laughs> our expectations, you know, and um music's oh, a music's yeah. a big factor. Sometimes yeah, you'll just get yeah. in the car and that specific song that you would sing in the car together would come on and and that's their way of saying hello, I'm here, you know. Um Sometimes they'll drop yeah. um, feathers. Um, people, oh yeah, it's you know, like... the feathers will come out of nowhere, and they're kind of in your path. You open the door from your car, you're in a rush mm-hmm. to go to the grocery store, and there's a feather right by your right foot. Right there. And then where? How did that? Yeah. It, so yeah. I, yeah. I have a couple of questions. I've been peeking over here. Oh, sure. Uh, Maria says, "Good evening." The more she says, "The more I open myself to allowing grief to come as it does and feel it." the more I get signs and messages from them. So she's sounding like she's uh, feeling her grief and surrendering to her grief and not trying to fight the grief anymore. And Mm. that's when there's room for the spirit to come in. 
Um, That's a good point. Fighting the grief. Yeah. I because I think, I think you, you have to, you know, I think we all have to, to feel that emotion. I think it's normal right. to feel that emotion, right. you know, on so many different levels because right. it affects us differently on those different levels. Yes. Um, and um, I know when I lost my parents, um, and it's been over 25 years ago now, um, you know, I, I, I still miss them, you know, because they're not yeah. here in the, in the yeah. physical. Um, and even though they visit me pretty regularly uh, to tap in and say hello, um, you know, it's still as, as a medium, it's still Nancy, it, it, you know, I wish they were here in the physical, you know, I wish they I were know. here. I know. You know, just for that I one know. last hug and I know. that one last time that you get a chance to have those great conversations yeah. that, um, you know, that I are so, so special. Right. <laughs> when my father passed, he was 91 and he was living in Michigan and I was in New England and I had called him pretty regularly. He was pretty good at picking up the phone. I mean, he's kind of a, you know, about, you know what I mean? The, the kind of the 91 year old mindset is a little different than am I going to pick it up or not? I'm not sure. But um, when he did pick it up, we had great <laughs> conversations and he passed and I went home. And then all of a sudden I just said, I got to call dad. I haven't called him in a while. And I went, I can't call him. And mm -hmm. I felt so sad. Um, yes. And that was me saying, okay, I'm grieving still. Gail asks another question. I've heard there's a visiting hour between three and four a.m. Have you heard this? You know that spirit comes through like in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, yeah, I have actually. Um, and it, uh, to be honest with you, Gail, it's happened to me a few times around uh, that that time of the evening, uh, where you woken up at between three and four in the morning, and you're like, "What just woke me up?" You know, mm -hmm. and um. Sometimes um, I've had a visitation uh, where I thought I was just imagining it and I could smell my mother's perfume, you know. Mm, there, a sign, smell, yeah. mm -hmm. smell, yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about, the jump on that with the smell and the taste. I was just talking to somebody about who's building her intuition and I, I, I said, you know, our clairs are clear smelling and tasting clairaliens and clairoct, august, clair gusting. And um, as mediums, the smell and the taste is is part of great gathering information from the spirit communicator, the favorite the favorite perfume, like you said, you smelled your mother's perfume or the favorite cookies or the cabbage soup or they used to work in a a factory and you can smell the oil or, or something like that. So, mm -hmm. so smelling and tasting, and I, I was talking about intuition, smelling and tasting. If you're talking to somebody trying to make a decision, you have a bad taste in your mouth pay attention to it because you're you're getting information through your senses but we do get um information through our senses when spirit is talking to us and don't um forget about that way they have of communicating they're really creative um, sure <laughs> lights flickering um is one of my i see that all the time you know when the lights flicker or something goes out off it comes back yes. on i said Okay, who's here? I went through a whole period and I never figured out who it was. There was somebody who smoked a cigarette and they were around me all the time whenever I worked. And I'm I'm the only one living here. There's nobody that smokes is here. And I'm wow. like, I can't, my neighbors are too far for me to smell their cigarettes. I and I to this day, I said, whoever you are, and I thought it might be my dad, but he had quit smoking years before he passed, but he loved his cigarettes. And I was wondering if my dad was just hanging around looking over my shoulder, smoking one, but it was amazing. Just amazing. I I have had um, people, you know, uh, say to me in spirit, you know, I, I quit smoking years ago, but I'm having a cigarette right now in the spirit world, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's hilarious. Okay. Yeah, but that, they're able to create that there, you know, whatever they want to create. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> it is. It is funny. It is funny. Um, <laughs> so, um, so I had something in mind when you're working on. You need to connect with somebody that you love, um, and it's really you're feeling your your Jones and over it. That's an old term, right, from a long time ago. But you're feeling it, and um, I, I say sit with it because sometimes you're longing. Is, is spirit knocking on your door and saying, I'm here, I'm here. And you're, 
feeling it or you're sensing it in the bigger picture, but it hasn't quite filtered all the way down to your conscious mind. So mm -hmm. sit with it and give them um, the, your thoughts and, and have a conversation with them and, uh, and, and then let it go and then go through your day feeling how you're feeling, but go through your day as best you can. And then look for the little signs. Sometimes you'll get a, a little something, a little thing will show up because when they draw close, we feel them. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not just we mediums, but we do feel them when they draw close in funny, funny ways. It yeah, it, it, you're absolutely right. Um, and they do hear our thoughts. Um, and um, they hear our ideas too. So they I know. They don't hear all of our thoughts because sometimes. <laughs> <they're kidding. laughs> well, I think they do, but they don't care because they're in the spirit world and they don't really yeah. have, you know, too much of a judgment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they're over that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, rec yeah, I recently lost a friend. Um, she was out in North Carolina and um, I knew she was, she's going. Um, we were far, far away from each other and, and there weren't a lot of people around her. And she, I called the, the last time when I connected, somebody picked up the phone and she said, she's too, she can't talk. She's too nauseous. She's too, and then that was the end. Nobody picked up the phone after that. There were no um, announcements, nothing. And um, that left me with such a feeling of, of emptiness and loss. And even though we had talked regularly and I could tell she was failing quickly. And, you know, um, and I'm sharing this just so people could understand. I have not heard from her or had signs from her since then. And, um, and I, of course, I love her and, me, you know, and she had mediumship abilities as well. And I, I think, well, it's her time, her way. Um, I know that sometimes spirit doesn't come through right away. They just need a chill out time. I, I say that because I don't know what they're doing. If they, but sometimes they're here within seconds. It's, right. it's a, a mystery. Everyone is individual and unique. Every spirit is different in their experiences. I had one, um, could you speak to that? What would you? I totally, I totally agree with you. I think that every spirit is unique in its own way. Um, because you're right. Some people will come, come. I, I've had people who've crossed over the, the day they passed, like, and, and the person right. would come in for a reading, which was amazing to me. Like they would come in the next day. Um, and uh, they would come through immediately and they would say, well, he, I says, I, I could see that he passed less than a week ago and she's like well he passed yesterday and i'm like oh my goodness yeah, you know yeah so you just know that they've come in um i i've had i've had people come to me um the day they've passed um which is yes. quite shocking yeah um and then you know i've had relatives that um or friends that i haven't heard from in years and didn't know that they passed and then they came to me um, and I'd say, oh my gosh, you passed. And of course, I'd, I've lost touch with them over the years. So I'd pull it up on the internet, um, you know, on Google. And sure enough, they had passed, you know. Um, but they have come to say special, Same. wonderful messages yeah, to. Special blessings. Blessings yeah. to let me know that they're okay, you know, which is quite, so sweet. Nice. It is. It's really nice. Yeah. But, they, but, but you're right. There's no time frame. Um, it's it's different for every individual soul that crosses over. Right, right, right. And I have to, um, I'm giving it enough times and then I'm going to call you, Anthony, and we're going to sit down and see if she's going to talk. Okay. To but uh, there is something else that happens. Um, I've had this experience. What the a customer will come, a client will come and they want to talk to their loved ones. And sometimes they don't give it enough time and sometimes they do. Um but they have in mind exactly what they want to know, what they want to hear and how, and, and sometimes they want to re-experience that person because they miss him so much. And I did have somebody like that and the spirit came through was so excited and wanted to tell my, the client, his loved one, what it was like in heaven and all the things that had happened to him while he was passing after he's, he passed and what he was doing right now. And, um, 
she was too full of grief to listen to that. She didn't want to know about that. She wanted to know, I want to know, I want to rehab that recover. I want to review that conversation we had before he passed. I, I want to, you know, I'm, I want to know the color of his socks. I want to know the color of his car. And it, he wasn't interested at all in telling me that stuff. And um, in the end of her, she felt like let down and she felt that I was a bad medium. And, and it just went down. It was the grief uh, got in her way. It was like a whirlwind of grief where she really couldn't hear what her son. And she says, we share everything. I said, I know you share everything. And he's sharing the biggest thing of his life right now with you. I don't want to hear that. So I'm, I'm, I know I'm sounding negative, but we get in our own way of hearing, really hearing spirit when we're deep in grief. That's true. But, and, you know, um, the spirit world, I, I, you know, when we're, when we're communicating with spirit, as you well know, Nancy, um, but to our audience, um, the spirit world chooses what they're going to talk about, yep. you know, um, and usually it's the most meaningful thing that you need to hear, you know, um, mm -hmm. they'll talk about certain experiences you shared and, and, um, um, they'll talk about, you know, things that are going on in your life currently to prove that they're around you. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes people were like, well, you know, do you get a nickname? And I'm like, well, sometimes I do get a nickname, but, you know, sometimes a nickname is not important. What's important is those specific experiences that only you would know and cherish, you know, that are so specific and even things that maybe they had said to you and, and their mannerisms and their characteristics yeah. come through. Um, and, um, you know, you, you get to feel the story of this person uh, through the medium mm -hmm. to the client because they're telling their life story, right, Nan? Right, Nancy? Really, yeah, they're so, there. And it's a really wonderful way to um, see the person in a new way. You're getting to know that loved one in a, in a whole new light because they're in heaven and because they, and they're doing a life review and they're seeing this was really important to my life. And it never occurred to me to say this, but now that I'm on the other side, I really want this medium to say this. Right. Or so going back to what we were originally talking about is when, when the medium's not there and how, and so you could understand how grief can get in your way of your expectations of what you want spirit to say. And, and spirit can't talk to you like that. And um, they don't bring the lottery number back with them because they don't care about numbers. And um, but they also um, they have gone through a tremendous change, haven't they, Anthony? They're not, yes. I can't imagine that the passage to heaven or the passage to spirit leaves you unchanged. I mean, I know they you still have your personality and stuff, but that has got to change your perspective. It, it, it does because I think you see things from a different awareness and i i think that you um uh from what they tell me you know they always are saying well i wish i could have done this better you know i wish i could have been a better mom to you or yeah. i wish i'd have been more present rather than so wrapped up in my business or yeah. um maybe I, I i could have been more loving you know that's that comes through um many times for people that um, maybe have uh, really felt uh, neglected from their parents, um, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. um, or abuse, you know, that comes yeah, through as well. Yeah. And so yeah. the, for, the yeah. forgiveness is the important thing. The thing. And in, they're healing well, there. Yeah. Healing. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I've had many people, I don't want to talk to that person. They, they hurt my life too much and I have no use for them coming through and talking about that healing aspect is important but sometimes you're not ready to hear that. Um, you're healing your past trauma from the person who is in the spirit side is very healing to the person on the spirit side. Um, whether you are aware of it or not, my friend, um, another friend who passed came through a medium at church and and she says, you know, that healing stuff is real. Don't, don't, think it's not it's real stuff guys and he and the way he said it was exactly the way she would have said it and I, i'm like just hearing that from heaven that that energy healing that healing stuff that love stuff it, it matters and um that touched me so deeply and i said okay i'm paying attention to that healing stuff now i'm gonna and, um, <laughs> but 
<laughs> but yeah, they're, I feel like on the spirit side, they're learning and growing. And so often when we have that anger within ourselves where we're remembering dad was not very good to us or neglectful or whatever, whatever dad was, as we think about them after they've passed, you could almost think of them as saying, I'm sorry, or they're reaching out to you. Um, and they're, they're saying, um, I want to make this right because that's exactly. my job right now in heaven to make this right. But it's kind of, you know, I'm not in human form anymore. But when dad was in human form, there is no way he would ever say anything about it. Right. And he might not even even have said, I'm sorry. So now is his first chance to come through in the spirit world to say, gosh, I wish I could do it all over again and prove to you that I could be somebody different, but I can't, but please yeah. forgive me. I'm sorry. And they would yeah. never say they're sorry. They'll say to me, I never said I was sorry. And right. you're like, oh my goodness. And the person would say, you know, that I'm doing a reading for would say, absolutely. He would never say he was sorry. That is so, such proof of continuity of life. And it, it, you're seeing that they're growing and developing. Yes. It's not just your freeze fro, uh, what do you call it? Freeze frame. Um, right. In your memory, the last thing I remember, and that's how they always are. They're not that way. They yeah. have developed. I have a, a, a really nice message from Gail. Again, she said, my dad came to me in a dream hours before he passed, which I call a visitation. Because to this day, I remember word for word how he described where he was in heaven. And that was 50 years ago. So I'm wow. guessing that maybe her dad maybe was in a, in a uh, coma situation or something. But mm -hmm. he wanted to tell her what it was like in heaven. How beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So he was already in transition, um, you know, and and probably already able to communicate through that process, which was right. really quite beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And Deborah says, I've been blessed to get significant numbers sent to sent for me to see when I'm at my lowest. They were numbers that relate to my dad and sister. It's gotten me through many hard times. So she's, thank you, Deborah, for saying that because I said spirit doesn't do numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about that. But, uh, and um, yeah, we had, um, we've had some really beautiful um, experiences that are coming through Facebook. And you and I have had um, good experiences with our loved ones, interesting experience with our loved ones. And, um, mm -hmm. and you know, my, um, I don't always hear from those loved ones that have passed. I was really surprised to hear from Aunt Rosemary today. And I'm like, what? That's so cool. She just passed um, about a month ago. Oh, did she really? Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. and she was, you know, I hadn't seen her in a long time and she was in Michigan again. You know, I don't see a lot of relatives because I'm on the East Coast. And most of them are uh, down the West, Midwest. Uh -huh. And um, it was just touching that she thought of stuff kind of popping in while I was stirring the gravy from the chicken. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's like, oh, my gosh. Did she um, live in, in Detroit? Yeah, just outside of Detroit um, uh -huh. with, her, with her daughter. And uh, she uh -huh. had seven children and she was in her 90s and. Where did she live in Detroit, Nancy? I know you. I, I want to say Dearborn. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I know where that's at. They mm -hmm. kind of move around a lot, and I wasn't sure where they landed. Yeah. Bit, but I, I know she was in Dearborn for most of her life, but I think her daughter moved to Dearborn, and she moved in with her. But I know you spent a little time in Michigan. Oh, I, w I was I was born in Michigan. Um, oh. Yeah, so I'm originally from Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, I have just uh, transplanted to North Carolina. <laughs> oh, that's, I, as I remember, you're, you're a Midwestern guy. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm originally from Michigan. I've lived in all parts of Michigan, yes. And to um, I, to some of my friends um, uh, from a small town that I grew up in, in Northeast Michigan called Pos Posen, Michigan. Posen. And so uh, if there's anybody from Posen, Hi, because <laughs> I know, I think Gail is originally from Posen, if it's the right Gail I'm thinking it's of. It's Gail Chase Pelletier, does that sound right? Um, I'm not sure, yeah. not sure. Well, she could let us know if, uh, there's if a few. Yeah, there's a few Gales from yeah, that area. Yeah, there's a lot of Gales. 
<laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot of Nancys from that area too. Um, yes. No, Gail's from Maine, she says. So oh, from Maine. Okay. I'm not giving too much information away here. But, <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Maine. Uh, yeah, so um, they don't always talk to us. I, I did find that um, through my parents passing, it's taken a while. Um, my mom came through with signs about a month or two after she passed and then quieted down. And my dad, I just feel him every once in a while, he'll pop in and I'll feel him. But, mm -hmm. um, and some, um, so even as a media, we, I know that they're there. I know that they're well, and maybe you could talk to this too, Anthony, but I, I don't always hear them. They don't, they're not on demand for me. I don't know about you, but uh, I can think about them and ask them to show up, but I can't tell them what to do. Right. It's it's not like a, it's an on-demand kind of button, right, Nancy? It's it's yeah. kind of like they pop in when they pop in and you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. they catch you with the most un, uh, unexpected times. Um, let's put it that way. Yeah. And um, uh, a, a lot of times, like uh, when I'm in the shower, I just, I know this is crazy, but I'll get ready for my day for, you know, a day of readings and I'll I'll be getting people dropping in in the shower, you know. <laughs> and they're telling, I'm like, please. I mean, I'm taking a shower, but they're already starting to tell me about like what you know who they are. Here's Uncle Charlie, you know, and um, they oh come gosh. through in music sometimes, and so sometimes oh, there's nice. there's music playing, and um, so you know, I'll start my day, and I, you know, I, I get myself settled, and my first client will will come in and um. I'll say, do you, do you know, I'm, I usually don't say the name because sometimes I get the name wrong. Uh, I'm not a names medium. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but what I do get correct is the music. And mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I said to this client, I said, you know, I hear from spirit right away and your father is here and he is singing home on the range and he won't stop singing it while I was in the shower getting in, getting ready in the bathroom. And she just went, oh my gosh. She goes, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And I said, what, what? And she says, oh my God. She says, that was the only song that my dad played on the guitar and he would play it all the time and we <laughs> hated it. And oh I said, goodness. oh my gosh, you're kidding. She says, we hated that song so bad. I was like, oh no, he's playing it again. And um, oh, and she says, yeah. she just had tears coming down her eyes. She says, I can't even begin to tell you how significant that is because that is my father. <laughs> and we oh, just laughed. Gosh. And I says, well, so much for, I usually start off with a little prayer before I start my reading. I said, we're skip the prayer. We're going right into it. Right, so right here we go. Yeah. Oh so we gosh. had we had a really great um session. Her father was just an amazing man. That was just a beautiful experience. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, they come through with music uh for me. And there was one day I was singing the baby Jesus staying alive, and I kept thinking, is it my imagination? And it just wouldn't go away. And so soon enough, it was my second client who used to, you know, dance with her friend and they would dance disco and um, the staying alive thing was their their um, um, line dancing that they used to do um, when you know, of course, uh, in the seventies. So we laughed about that, you know, because it was a, a special memory for her. But yeah, they come wow. through they in music, music for songs. me. <laughs> I love that. That is awesome. What a gift! <laughs> um, I want to see oh. Melissa. Uh, Melissa says I've been seeing my dad's face almost every day. Then my son started morphing through, went through her dad's face. Yesterday, oh. my son's face was full blown smiling. Wow, I can't explain how I felt. It was amazing. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's in, um, that's called clairvoyant. Mm -hmm. Not all of us have the clairvoyant gift. And sometimes the clairvoyant can come on for a little bit and then it can close down. But Melissa's seeing clairvoyantly her father coming in and then her son coming through. Mm -hmm. And it, Beautiful. comes in like a, it's beautiful that she she it's beautiful um just to talk to people a little bit about clairvoyant it can look like a daydream and it and it can look like um you're imagining something in your head or or it could just start to build inside of your mind's eye like a movie 
that you're not inviting, but you have no, um, I mean, you can shut it down anytime you want, but you're not causing it to happen. So sometimes okay. when it, during a daydream, a daydream goes off the rails and goes on its own. Um, and you go, where am I getting this? That spirit talking to you often. And then, um, then um, the clairvoyant part where the, where the, um, those are real. What, you know, when the movie shows up and a lot of times spirit can just jump in on a daydream and cause we're kind of relaxed and kind of like in another world, thinking about something and they can just jump right in because we have an opening for them. Yes. Wonder just Melissa said, Oh, thank you for clarifying. You know, um, uh, you can relate to this, Nancy, but you know, um, how we, as, as, as we work as mediums, um, you know, we have to surrender ourselves to kind of allow the information to drop in from spirit and to get our, you know, our analytical mind and ego out of the way. And, um, it's interesting it's you're you're telling the story of of its unfolding of this person mm -hmm. when they're coming through um so i kind of uh, when i kind of explain to someone that doesn't know how the spirit world communicates with us um they communicate through images and um it's it's almost like another sign language it's it's yes right? Yeah. And you have to put these, all of these pieces of the puzzle together to create the story. Yes. And it's our job as the medium, we're simply the voice box to the spirit world. So mm -hmm. we're the vessel. It's really their gift of the spirit world flowing through us, which is mm -hmm. the divine actually. Um, and we're just really the radio frequency mm -hmm you know, connecting, and then we're the voice box for the client, mm -hmm. for the for the people here in the physical world. So that's why we're called a medium, because we're in between. And um, so I, I kind of lost track of what I was going to say. Well, um, let me how see spirit here. communicates is really oh, key here. It, yes. It's and, really out of something here. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I kind of equate it to um, people say, well, how do you Put this all together and i kind of equate it to like giving a child um a story like if, if a child said tell me a story and not a story from a book but you have to make up this story for this child and you know you're you're bringing the princess in the castle and then you're bringing you know all the life characters coming and and you're just making it up as you go right because all these ideas are just dropping into your mind and right. you're going along with the story, creating the story for the child, right? right. right? And you want to make it different because if you're giving a child a story and you're a, re a regular storyteller, you, you want to make it sound different because they're going to say, well, I've heard that one before. Um, but it, 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 it's kind of the same thing other than the fact that we're not making it up, you know? Um, it's it's kind of like the ideas are dropping into the into the mindset and right. there's no um there's no curriculum to follow or nothing right. to prepare right. like we don't prepare <laughs> other, than, other than connecting that's it you know that's it it's the scariest thing ever because like i <laughs> i'm going to talk to you for an hour but i have no idea what i'm going to say but that's but, the truth but you, you, here's the thing um you, when you said that spirit communicates um I don't hear them talking to me in my head. Occasionally I'll hear one or two word with Claire, Claire audience, but mostly I get impressions from lots of different areas in my sensitivities. Claire sentient, Claire cognizant will come through. I'll smell something, Claire aliens or Claire gusting. You know, you see them and I'm, like you said, putting it all together without trying to make sense out of it, just putting it in enough to say a word to you that you understand it. But sometimes I can go too far and say, oh, this, I saw this, so this meant this. And then we, I don't know what you mean. It's like, okay, I'm pulling it back. I'm just going to tell you exactly what I feel, exactly what I saw. And um, I'm not going to make, I, and I, and uh, I'm going to stop making sense out of it. And that's when, boom, I know exactly what you're saying. Does right. that, because it, it doesn't make sense to me in here. Spirit doesn't necessarily talk in long sentences or paragraphs the way we're talking now. Exactly. 
they're giving us pictures and and sentences, maybe short sentences or words, um, smells and feelings as well. Um, and, and and as mediums, um, you know, like Nancy and I, um, or any other medium, we're feeling and sensing um, the description as well. There's an inner sense sensory uh, and then an inner knowing yeah. um, of, of how we, um, and we all work differently. Don't you agree, Nancy? We're all work oh, yeah, very definitely. uniquely. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which is, I'm glad you're saying that because um, for a couple of reasons, going to more than one medium, you can get different pictures of, of what the person is experiencing. And every medium has a different personality. So they're going to pick up different things that you wouldn't, they prioritize certain things. And maybe you don't, because you said you, I know somebody who would just say names, but no more information than the names. And so you could only know that they had your loved one through the names that they were saying. But I don't do names very well. I try. Um, and I say, I'm going to throw a name at you, but don't take it too personal. <laughs> but then it, but you, you said you don't say names, but you describe the personalities very cleanly, very clearly, and you're able to give the message there. Um, so if you want to, so having said that, People will go from medium to medium to to want to hear their loved one, and then then they've been to three mediums, and they'll come to me and and they'll want me to, or you, maybe you've had this experience, be like the other medium, or give them the identical information that the other medium gave them, so they know this was their loved one, and it it's just not going to happen, baby. You, you know, it's, right. I'm going to feel it differently, sense it differently, and looking at mediums' personalities, I think. Can give you a good idea of the kind of stuff you're going to get right and and if you go to let's say you go to, to a different medium and you have a, a reading and they connect with your dad and he said this this and this well if you go to the other medium the spirit world's already going to know what they've already said in this particular reading over here right. they're not going to say exactly the same thing because they're going to want to talk about something that you need to hear you know that you haven't heard yet coming from this medium, mm -hmm. you know, because there's more information that they, they may want to say. Um, and it doesn't mean that it's um, because it's different. Doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just that they already know they've already communicated with you one time over here, or maybe two times yeah, over here. Yeah. You know, they're right. not going to repeat the same information. Now let's think of it like this, this way. You have you have an incident. Say um, mm -hmm. a tractor trailer falls over and there's a big accident, and you've got ten people who have seen the accident. You go to each of those people and you say, "What did you see? What happened?" You're gonna get ten different stories. It must Absolutely. drive the police nuts. But someone was in the front. Someone was in the back. Somebody was busy listening to a radio, and wasn't paying attention until the tire flew by. So, do you see what I'm saying? It's like it's the same way. Absolutely. Yeah, the information is going to be distributed differently because everybody has a different viewpoint of what they've experienced. Right. You know? mm -hmm. And each medium has a certain level of sensitivity and that's perception that's different. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make them wrong or right, but you'll get information. I don't know about you, Anthony, but I'll get somebody four years later saying, I finally figured out what you were talking about. I'm like, oh my God. So, and, and, yes. and, uh, but I, but they weren't real thrilled with what I had said to begin with. And that, <laughs> what are you going to do? But then they come back and they say, um, wow, you were spot on, but it took me four years to figure it out. Right. Well, I mean, sometimes, you know, you have clients that come to you that don't want to hear what they want to hear, um, or, or what they hear from the medium. Um, the, the interesting thing is, you know, it's um, it sometimes it just takes time for it to register, um, or yeah. for people to understand. Yeah. Um. Sometimes they have totally forgot about a situation yeah. or information yeah. about the family, right. and then later on they'll be speaking to relatives and they'll go, "Oh yeah, that's absolutely right," right. and they'll say, "Oh my God, I forgot about that," and I fought him so bad saying he was wrong you know and they'll they'll, right. send, a, they'll send an email or send yeah. a message and say oh my gosh you're absolutely right right um, i had this um i was doing a demonstration um in Asheville about um well several years ago um this particular demonstration and i had a lady sitting way way in the back and 
Um, there was probably, I don't know, 80 people there. Um, and I said to her, I said, you know, um, your family is from Germany and uh, there's like three or four generations back there. And uh, your, your relatives are telling me that you, that you had a bakery, that they had a bakery in Germany, in Frankfurt area, um, or near, near Frankfurt, uh, in a little village. And uh, for three generations, they had a bakery. And she says, well, I, I don't think so. And I says, well, you don't think so or you don't know? And she says, well, I don't know, but I don't think so. I've never heard that. Okay. I says, well, okay. I says, well, let me go back and ask again. So I, I asked and sure enough, they nodded. They said, yes, we, we, <laughs> we have had, you know, this bakery. So I told her, I said, you know, the spirit world says this, you know, that there is a bakery there, there was for three generations. And I mean, she was very adamant that her, she would have known about it. Well, time went by and um, about four months went by and um, I had this lady come in for an appointment for a reading and uh, she sat down and I said, well, how did you hear of me? I always ask my clients and she says, um, Anthony, you uh, gave me a reading in your last demonstration about four months ago in Asheville. I was the lady who was sitting in the back giving you a hard time. <laughs> and I started to laugh. I said, oh my gosh, I remember you. And I says, and she says, yes. And this is why I'm here. She says, I reached out to my family in Germany. And sure enough, we had a bakery. Our family had a bakery way oh back for three generations. And you were absolutely right. And she says, wow. it just blew my mind. Like, I could not believe that. Wow. And I says, well, the wow. spirit world knows. I said, you know, I, um, but it, it just proves, um, you know, that sometimes there's information that comes about uh, from your reading that you don't understand that maybe that you, you don't really know about, you know, or um, how things are going to come yeah. about, in, you know, um, and change in your life to those circumstances sometimes too, you know, um, and we don't see it, you know, because we're, we're like, no, that's not going to happen. But, you know, sometimes uh, the, the client will come back and say, yeah, that did happen to me, you know, that did happen. And I totally agree. I resonate with everything mm -hmm. you said. It was spot on. But that is lovely. You know, it, I, and I think that's a great story for us mediums who get something and they've got the naysayers come in, and, but spirit's not giving up that idea. And sometimes <laughs> we want to change the story. So the, the, the person's in the audience says, yes, that's great, but we can't. And, and it was that miracle of her calling the family and realizing that that was true. That proved truly proved the continuity of life. And we just have to sit and bite our nails and uh, or just surrender to it. But giving what you get is is very, very important. So thank mm -hmm. you for that reminder. And then also, if if our medium is saying something that's off the wall and you don't understand it, take a deep breath and be willing to do some research. Because maybe yes. there's something coming through that um, time for you to know. But uh, I, I have two things. One question. And then I wanted to remind people that in two days, February 16th, Anthony and I are doing a, an event. We're doing a demonstration of mediumship. And I'm really excited about it because I'm going to be cracking open my sketchbook and um, Anthony and I are going to be sharing mediumship links so that you'll see me draw. And Anthony, tell, tell us a little bit more about what's going to happen. Well, I'm an evidential medium and so is Nancy. Um, so I will be bringing in spirit um, and uh, bringing in the description of the person, the loved one that's coming through. Um, I'll bring their personality through. Um, I'll, I'll have to describe what they look like. And then Nancy's going to draw the spirit to come to life basically on paper, right, Nancy? Yep. Yeah. Um, so Nancy's very, very talented at what she does. Thanks. She's just um it's just amazing and there's not a lot of mediums that do this type of thing um that nancy does um so uh she's considered a spirit artist correct nancy is that yes what? spirit yeah. artist yes yeah so uh it's 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 really um 
you know, I, I love watching it and um, she'll, she'll bring the spirit to fruition in about, you know, nine to 12, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nine imagine. minutes maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is pretty fast. <laughs> yes, yeah, so all those years in figure drawing, doing fast drawings, we had to, four, you got four minutes, you got to get the whole, so thank God they gave me that training because I'm using it now. But people have said, you know, I do do evidential mediumship. I do use my words. I do talk. And, and I also use my pencil. And sometimes, I mean, I think you'll see Anthony work, you'll see me work, but then you'll see Anthony and I work together. And, um, and when I can draw without having to open my mouth, the drawings get better. <laughs> but um, people have said that listening to the evidence and then watching the drawing unfold on paper, is, it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's exhilarating and, and occasionally really brings home continuity of life yeah too. it does it's fascinating and um what i what i find is that there are so many unique ways that the spirit world uh works through us you know yeah. there's some people um i myself am a physical medium um they usually come through me uh through lights um they will come through sometimes while i'm doing my readings in my room um, and at some of my demonstrations, I've had flashes of lights um, happen several wow. times. So um, it and I don't know when it's going to happen or, you know, I, it just happens. Um, and uh, it sometimes freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But I, I know it's them communicating, letting me know that they're there. Um, but um, the audience has witnessed it. I mean, everybody. Really? Uh, oh, my so, gosh. So, you know, so. What I'm trying to say is that myself, I'm unique in my own way, and Nancy's unique in her own way. Um, and um, you know, it's it's I never even knew that I could manifest that, you know, or actually they manifest it, but they, they do it around of, me. Yeah, they're using your battery. So they're using my yeah, battery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I have a question um by Deborah. She goes, I've been seeing duplicate numbers almost daily when looking mm -hmm. at the clock 222 333 444 1111 so forth is this more from angels or could it be loved ones that have passed is this an opening for communications um well first of all um you can you can check out the numbers um you can google the numbers of what their spiritual meaning is cuz um and depending on what the spiritual meeting or the message is, you know, you could relate that to maybe what a loved one might say to you or what um, maybe you're thinking of a loved one and the numbers come through and those particular numbers are a message um, given to you from the spirit world. Um, mm -hmm. I know that usually threes and fours are uh, angelic numbers, you know, yeah. um, I think yeah. fives are as well. Um, and sometimes when you're woken up, um, you know, the middle of the night at three or four o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning, those are usually when, uh, you look at the time and if it's not at yeah. three on the dot, but it's like three Oh three or four 44, um, those are specific angel numbers. Yeah. Um, you've been, the angels woke you up to see it. That's for sure. I absolutely. Four, four, four mm -hmm. means angels are with your angels are moving around you. That's right. And, uh, but numerology, numerologically. I know three is expansion. So if I see a three, I'm like, okay, get ready. <laughs> something's going to grow or yeah. something's going to show up. But, but yeah, do look them up. And um, I wouldn't hesitate to think that they were one or the other. I, I mean, definitely angel communicators talk about those numbers all the time, but I don't see why spirit couldn't pick up on that language. Absolutely, they can. Yeah. Yeah. I had a... um. Uh, when I was studying with uh, James von Prague and I was um, at Omega Institute, which is in New York, um, I was studying his mediumship, um, one of his courses there. And uh, I was still at this point uh, where I was hesitant of like, why am I doing this? I mean, am I am I on the right path with studying to be, become a medium? And, uh, you know, you have those questions, you know, um, 
when you're going through the processes of medium, as you well know, Nancy, because we're like, why is this happening to me? Am I doing the right thing? Oh, and, I know. you know, you yeah. have that, you know, <laughs> oh, which what is normal. Yeah. Yeah. What am yeah. I doing here? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm here, but I don't know if I should be here. I know. I have a um, corporate job. I'm working. I have kids. I'm a single. Right. Woman. They want me to do this now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so. and, and it's a lot of investment. I mean, uh, as you well, you know, Nancy studied with, um, quite a few different, you know, well-known oh, yeah. mediums as well. And yeah, as myself, yeah. and you invest a lot of money to have this education because you want to learn from the best and you really want to know, you know, am I, am I supposed to be here? Yeah. You know, there's that point um, until, yeah. you know, until you have enough confidence, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but So um, Anthony, I must tell you right now, yes. you just had a big light happen behind you. Oh, did I really? When you were talking about teachers. So one of your teachers is right behind you. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I hope Mavis is here. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So, so but, keep going. Um, so I, um, I was, you know, questioning, uh, questioning myself of being there. And I stayed in this cabin by myself. Um, and uh, when I entered the cabin, I kept hearing, holy, 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 like the mm -hmm. song, you know, the Trinity song. Um, and I went to Catholic school. Catholic yep, school. Yep, I know, I know and so I, I remember, you know, singing it in choir, but I don't go around as an adult singing, you know, um, hymns. And so it stopped me in my tracks, you know, got my yeah. attention. And make a long story short, the song would not go out of my way. I went to sleep because I go to bed early for class mm -hmm. the next day. And I woke, something woke me up and I caught myself singing it. When I woke up, I was singing it. Right. And it wow. startled the it startled the heck out of me because I was I, yeah. I was like, oh my yeah. gosh. And I looked at the clock and it was three o'clock on the dot. Whoa. Right. And moments after that, there was a, a mirror that was on the wall. And moments after that, I looked at the reflection on the opposite side. I can see the wall behind me because I was turned on my side and the bed. And I put my glasses on because I was like, you know, I, you got my attention. <laughs> and um, I had an angel, an angelic visitation, a big ball of light came down um, in that room. And the 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 um, ball of light was rotating. And then it just became this um, immense, beautiful, it almost like having the sun in your room. That's how bright it was. Yeah. Wow. And um, so that happened for about three or four minutes. And I, I, remember taking these short little breaths because I couldn't even move. <laughs> and um, I kept going, oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh. And I, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. And then when I turned over to look at it directly, it went black in the room. And wow. that even scared me more. So now yeah. I'm laying on my back. I'm looking up at the ceiling. I can feel the presence in the room. I can feel the presence. It was so strong. And I kept thinking, what next? Like, what's going to happen next? You know, because I was really kind of startled. I was a little scared and startled. Um, and I had the covers here. And um, all of a sudden, I felt the most amazing amount of love that I've ever felt in my life oh, in so the room. Nice. And all I could do was just have tears come out of mm -hmm. my eyes. Nothing. I couldn't see anything. There was nothing visual. But I was, I could feel this love in the room. It was just amazing. Uh -huh. um, and that happened for probably about four minutes. And then I felt it fade and leave the room and leave the cabin. And the room went flat. So I know that it had left. And then I, I just went, wow. And I thought it was over. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly the um, air raid went off at um at omega and it was like the not a, not a fire alarm the air raid light like mm -hmm. um hogan's heroes and it was so loud i couldn't even think straight but i, I tell you my body jumped about a foot off the bed wow <laughs> i was so scared and i um that lasted for about 15 minutes i finally got dressed and to make a long story short um you know everybody was in amazement of why it went off during my whole week, that was my first day <laughs> wow. at Omega. Um, and 
I talked to people, staff people, I talked to so many people, and I finally talked to the president of Omega at the coffee house there. And they said they have never experienced that the entire time that Omega's no been open. Way. Wow. They have no idea what set it off. And wow. that speaker was right above my cabin. So you can only imagine how loud it was. <laughs> but I really do feel that was a sign of the spirit world or the angelic world to tell me, you know, you had doubt that you think you, you may not need to be here, but we're telling you, you do. And that was oh, a huge experience yeah, I'll never lovely. forget for the that rest is, of my life. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, thank you. So for that me. was my angel story. Yeah, <laughs> I love now, I have to say something here. Christine says, and I, and I wasn't going to interrupt you because it was a great story, but are you still seeing expanding and brightening light behind Anthony? Because we all saw it while you were oh. talking. It was... Oh, really? So you have to really? watch this on when we get the record, come go back. Okay. Up it's very, okay. very cool. Okay. Um, well, you know, usually when I start building my energy, the, sometimes the, yeah. the light will, um, the, the spirit world will create some type of flash or light or, yeah. and that's what I mean about the physical mediumship, but I'm used to it now. <laughs> Good. My husband, my husband's used to it too. One time we were sitting on the sofa and this ray of light came through the lampshade and peered across the room in these multi layers of light that panned across the room. And my husband just looked at me and he goes, what the heck is that? I'm like, I don't know. I said, he says, well, they're here i says they certainly are <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> it was yeah. it was really crazy but it only oh, lasted good. for about four seconds but it was enough to like okay. it was coming from this lamp and yeah. it was oh. not this lamp but a lamp through the lampshade i think spirit was saying hey yeah. husband yes. you love anthony too <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the dogs were like watching it too you know they were oh, between us <laughs> oh my goodness oh that is awesome so a couple more comments um people are really loving what we're talking about we gotta talk about this more um and uh here we go about um oh oh gail says nancy sketched my dad and stepdad years ago so oh. she recognized them sandra says I still remember a demonstration you did. And when you turned your picture, the woman beside me gasped and said, that's my mom. Oh, how lovely. That was very good. And, um, and then Deborah's just really thrilled. Um, her sister's name is also Nancy. So that adds to my love of hearing and learning what you guys so beautifully give. So that's really nice. And we're really, oh. so it's really talking to me about how people, um, you don't need to hear this. Um, Melissa is back saying my phone turned on all by itself at 4.32 a.m. I feel I felt, oh my gosh, that's my son. And I felt inclined to look up the number and see if it meant anything. It's the, that number is the vibration of love. When she oh, how up. lovely. It's very, very wow. nice. Yeah, see, so, it, it, it's just amount, uh, it, it's just a, it's about being aware, right, Nancy? It's really about, um, mm -hmm you know, take notice of those, those subtleties because the spirit world does want to communicate with us and they are watching us and they, they, they do want us to be, um, happy and full and, um, moving forward in our lives. Um, I, I run across, um, you know, so many who have, I'm sure you do too, Nancy. I mean, we all do as mediums, but we, where we, where people have lost their significant other, um, husband, yeah. wife, oh, um, right. boyfriend, girlfriend. And it, it, I find that I see people have a hard time, you know, moving forward after so many years, they are still in this, I can't go out and, you know, move forward my life to be, have another partner or have another, um, another husband or a wife. And, um, you know, my, I would say, out of all the readings that I have given, that those people that come through want those people to move forward and want them to love again, yeah. and want them to be happy and joyful and not be living in this sorrow, you know, um, 
because um, you know they're over there and and we're over here and we do have to continue on in the physical world. We do. We do. You know, do. as hard as it is. I mean, we have to go through the morning, but I think there's a part where you do have to pick your life up and say, I have to live again, you know. And that's that's what the spirit world wants us. They want they want yeah. us to be happy. Yeah. And our and on our blueprint. Yeah. There's I a so blueprint. Mm-hmm. I wish I knew where that blueprint is and how to read it. But yes, there is a blueprint and um, yeah. we are meant to have a sense of well-being and joy and, and peace in our lives. And um, yeah, those those on the other side um, are whole, they're complete and they want us to be happy and whole and, and complete as best we can here. So thanks for saying that. That's perfect. Yeah, because yeah. it's yeah. it is important for so many people to hear that you do... Um, you know, you shouldn't feel guilty um, about moving forward in your life to have happiness and love again, you know. Well, thank you for saying that. That is so, so key and so important. And It is. I think a lot of the uh, things that we um, go through in the relationships here, jealousy or or whatever, or, I, or loyalty, I can never, it, it's, um, it changes when we, the other ones pass and we now need to stand up and complete our lives and go forward. And they're, they're not going to be jealous. They're not going to hold us our feet to the fire because it is no. <laughs> till death do us part, but they still love us and they still want the best for us. And it's hard to wrap your head around it when you're on this side, do what's right for you, do what's right for you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, do we have some time for some readings? Yeah, we do. I think, I think we're going to just kind of um, say, you know, end this part of it and know that spirit wants you to be happy and wants you to be loved and <clears> invite <throat> you to come to the event. Um, hopefully you will after you listen to us talk. And, and I'm going to now sign off and turn the recording off so that when we give readings, people will um, not feel like they're being recorded. <laughs> so. Thank you for joining the Angelscapes podcast. We hope you've gained new insights and inspiration for your journey to uncover and access your soul's power. For more information and a deeper dive into finding clarity in your life, go to angelscapes.com. Remember to subscribe so you can be part of the discussion. It may just change your life. See you next time.